and to run the maze with fewer and fewer errors. Soon, they eliminate the errors altogether. They move faster. As the rat moves, it's creating an internal map of its world. Researchers use maze studies to help identify general principles about learning and memory, and what they learn can be applied to other species, even us. I design games. I code. In video games, we come across these principles each time we play. They are designed so we use our memory to learn, adapt, and advance. Without our memory, we'd get nowhere. George down, or you're gonna get lotion on him. Hey, Sam. Where are you going? We're just going to find shells. I won't go into the water. Okay, just stay where we can see you. Sam. My precious Sam. You must remember this. Becoming parents gave Claire and I a greater sense of purpose. He told me enough! Every day brought with it new memories, each one sacred in its own way. Scaredy bear, scaredy bear, teased brother. And that's quite enough of that, added Papa Bear.
God's telling us here that no matter how bad things seem right now, something better is waiting for us. Doesn't it feel real? Don't feel real. I know exactly what you mean. What's this? I just, I thought we should start putting stuff away. It's been months. Oh, I don't think I'm ready yet. Can we just leave everything the way that Sam left it? I'm sorry, I, I should have talked to you first. At least for a little while. I mean, I just don't think I'm ready to shove the memory of her into the attic. That's not what I'm doing. Her books? No, no. These... These are... These are what? These are her favorite things. Matt! Oh, Matt? What are you doing? Sorry, he said I could crash here if I can't drive. I, I, I was, um, I was gonna sleep in the garage. I thought somebody was breaking in. I got hungry. <laughs> Mike. All right, let's escape it down. Your sister's sleeping. And so what's the occasion? Do I need one? You good, though? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm... I'm seeing someone. Cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I uh, figured you'd probably only hear about it, but... Oh, dude. It's nice to hear about something happy. Honestly. Might I ask you something that's gonna sound weird? <laughs> you remember the, the children's book when you were growing up about the family of bears? The Berenstein Bears. Berenstein. S-T-E-I-N. Yeah, Stein, they were Jewish. What? Stain, Baron Stain. Huh. This is weird, right? Huh. Ah.
have a ton of client meals today. I really need you out of the kitchen. I'm oh, sorry, Matt. Matt's asleep in the garage, so. Okay. Sure, you're ready to get back to work. Mm. You take more time off if, if you think you need no, it. No, I like the work. I, just, I need to focus on something. How about you? Babe, do you remember this? The, I mean, do you remember where this was taken? Yeah, it's Griffith Observatory. Well, yeah, but is that how you remember it? I mean, is, is that where we were? I swear, I remember taking this photograph, we, but we were in Seattle. We were visiting your parents and, and uh, yeah, you, remember you were really mad at your mom and, and, uh, and we were at the Pacific okay. Science Center. Doesn't ring any bells? No, you're, you're confused. It's Griffith Observatory. And, um, yeah, I was really mad at my mom, but they were they were here. They were visiting for the holidays. Oh, but I remember Sam's facial Okay, expression. Brendan, was... please, I need space. I'm sorry, I just... No. Sleep. Great. <laughs> I remember where we were when we took this photo. Claire's mother had begged us to come with Sam before they went another year without getting to see her. Claire and her mom had a blowout, so I kept finding places to take the family whenever I could. We went to the aquarium, we went to the zoo, we went to the Pacific Science Center. It was the Pacific Science Center. It wasn't Griffith Observatory. I want to show you something. The term was coined by paranormal consultant Fiona Broom refers to a widespread misconception that former South African president Nelson Mandela died in the 1980s while he was incarcerated. I heard somebody say, now where's Mandela? Well, Mandela's dead. The Mandela Effect. Now they're saying... Someone often many people Mandela having a clear memory of something that actually did not happen. Chef, peanut butter? A whole community sprung up around this. I mean, it's, it's disorienting. Darth Vader actually never said, Luke, I am your father. What he actually said was... No. I... Jiffy, everyone knows it's Jiffy. How Peter would you Barnum. feel if you could no longer trust your own memories? We're living in parallel universes, multiple timelines. So, what do, you, what do you think? I think I need something to eat. Okay, but if you had to pick an explanation, false memory. <laughs> Look, on Reddit. <laughs> In the jet source. It's just a jumping off point. Fair enough. Look, I keep coming back to either we're sliding between parallel realities or, or B, like a simulation. Like we're, we're living in some holodeck VR shit and it's glitching out. Or it's just false memory. Plus, not everybody remembers the same effects. Plenty of people don't remember Sinbad being in a genie movie or Mandela dying in the 80s. But how do you explain to people that do have those memories? I mean, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people. How? Hey, you're out with my brother for a while today, huh? Yeah, we're, he's good. He's, uh, I think he's getting serious about the guy. He's, he's dating. Is that what you talked about? Mostly. Well, don't get stuck in here, you know. 
The CERN Super Collider is dangerous. The first beam will circulate on 10 September 2008. The first spottings of the Mandela Effect online that I can find is also 2008. Physicality also changes based on an observer to observe, which in layman's terms means that it exists in more than one place at one time. Parallel worlds overlap with ours. And if we're smart enough, we can dive into them and grab their resources and pull them back into ours. Are you saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers? That is correct. And what I've come to understand is that there are these incredible pictures buried in them are computer codes that contain all the information of a set of equations that are related to string theory. And so I'm left with the puzzle of trying to figure out whether I live in the matrix or not. And what does string theory say? It says that there is a multiverse. If there are other universes, can we go between universes? What answers are you looking for? Oh, I'm sure you, sure you get this a lot. But if there is a God, why take Sam? Don't let anyone say something like, God wanted another little angel. This idea that he took her. What happened to Sam wasn't God's plan or desire. Free will is the greatest gift that God ever gave. And in free will, we can have the will to in change. In a purely the deterministic universe, what happens to free will? So, God created the earth and then left us to do with it what we will. He certainly left us some guidelines, a whole book of them. We may never know the answers to some of these questions. You, Brendan, will never figure out the meaning of life. However, you can figure out the meaning, the purpose of your life. You know, Matt, I'm not the only one who thinks like this. I mean, this, you saw incredible scientists. Neil deGrasse Tyson, James Gates, lots of people. Because I love you, dude, I asked my friend oh. Angie about false memory. Oh, false memory. No, hear me out. She's a neurologist, like for real. She says that memories are like chains of neurons and synapses. And sometimes it only takes one molecule to hold it all together. And you can't predict which ones you hold on to. They're unreliable. Can I get two ice cream, please? please? <laughs> Our brains aren't like Dropbox where you can keep everything uncorrupted. Stuff gets scrambled. Matt, I don't deny that any of that is true, but I'm not talking about memory, okay? I'm talking about reality. You know, everyone getting things scrambled all in the same way and at the same time, it just doesn't make any... Thanks, keep it. It has nothing to do with our brains. And it's possible that in one reality, the old cartoon is the Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones, but that in this reality, it's Flint with a T. Brendan. It was always Flint. You... People are grasping at straws rather than accepting reality for what it is. Maybe it's you that can't accept that maybe none of this is real. You're quiet. Is everything all right? You've been hard to reach lately, hard to talk to. I know. I'm working on it. I talked to Matt. He was worried that you'd be coming fixated on this internet theory. Is that what you've been spending your time on? Maybe you can fill me in. I don't want to bother you with it. You wouldn't be bothering me. I just, just started noticing some things, and then, you know, Matt thought it was interesting, too, so... Well, can you elaborate? Like, what kind of things? I'm just trying to think of a good example. Uh, 
Can you picture the Monopoly man? Yeah. What's on his face? What does this have to do with anything? What does, what does he wear on his face? Um... One of those, um... Monocle. Yeah. So apparently, it's never been the case. I mean, I'm pretty sure he does. What does this have to do with anything? That's weird. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's just one example. I remember that too. Lots of people do, and that that's the thing. Hold on. Does this look different to you? Um, Where's his tail? I mean, you remember his tail, right? Sam had George with her at the beach that day. Stop. But, but if you look it up, Stop. Claire, if you look it up, it says he never had one, at, at least not here in whatever world or, or timeline it is that we're experiencing. Do you hear yourself right now? I mean, what does any of this have to do with anything? Do you remember after the funeral? You said to me, Claire, do you remember you said that it didn't feel real? Yeah. That's how I felt. That's it, this whole time. Like, like, just it doesn't feel real. That something is off in the world. Like it, like it shifted. Oh, Brendan. It's... And then I started to notice these things, but Claire, I'm not the only one. People all over the world are noticing changes. In geography, in the Bible. <laughs> in the Bible. Maybe it's in my head, Claire, but, but what if it's not? You know, what if Sam, I mean, what if, what if it's connected? Brendan, I'm not sure that you are dealing with this in a productive way. I don't think that any of this is healthy. This Claire, does, please do wait. not interrupt me. Please. There are things that, that I still want from life for us. I want to reopen my restaurant one day. I want you to just to be happy again and for us to be happy together and all this shit, it's just going to hold us back. Okay? Curious George, we're going to be Another round? Oh, I'll come with. No embarrassing stories while I'm away, please. <laughs> I take it you heard I talked to Claire. Yeah, that might have come up. I'm sorry if it caught you off guard. It's not that we can't talk about this stuff, it's just that you need to be there for each other and you're not. You're not holding up your end of the deal. You're right. You're right. We are living in a computer programmed reality, and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed. Simulation hypothesis was first published by Hans Moravec. Later, the philosopher Nick Bostrom developed an expanded argument examining the probability of our reality being a simulacrum. We are all very likely not living in a real universe, but living in a simulated universe. There's a one in billions chance that this is based reality. We're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any PC. Either we're going to create simulations that are indistinguishable from reality, or civilization will cease to exist. We, with our minds from a distance, can act as a quantum observer. Things like long-range field effects of consciousness where you need to send an influence, hopefully purely quantum mechanically, to a distance, you could do it this way. 
which would put the human person in being in a very powerful position. While many scientists talk about simulation theory, there is one man working to prove it. That's Dr. Roland Hughes. simulation and we are living in it you you and you code ones zeros you've all heard people talk about simulated reality before i'm sure the key to understanding this is understanding the Hi, Dr. Fuchs. Uh, my name's Brendan. I hope you don't mind me reaching out to you like this. I, I thought making a video would be the best way to explain myself. Uh... Sir, I admire your work. I'm intrigued by so many of your ideas. Yes. Um, I'm sorry to, I, well, I didn't hear back from you. I found this clip of a seminar that you gave on simulation theory, and I just, I have some questions and ideas too, based on what you were talking about. I recognize you now. You do? Yeah, I watched your video. It's Brendan, right? Yes. Yeah. It's nice to hear that my idea has captured someone else's imagination, but I'm running late, son. Well, maybe I could buy you a cup of coffee I, after. I, sorry, I can't be more helpful. Well, f five minutes? I'm sorry for your loss, son.
sorry. Maybe you should think about talking to someone, like a, like a grief counselor, or just someone that can help. Okay. I will. Please, Dr. Fuchs, I just need 10 minutes of your time. Before you say no. This is my home. No, but please, Dr. Fuchs. 10 minutes. Before you said five. Okay, five. Thank you. Sit down over there. So, who are you? Me, I'm... I design games. But... When Sam died, when my daughter died, I began to notice these changes, these uh, inconsistencies. You know, grief takes on many forms. And there are people you can talk to about losing your child. That's what my wife said. She thinks I'm losing my mind. When I started to look for explanations for what I was seeing, I found you. And? And I think we believe the same thing. <laughs> What do I believe? Hmm? Have you heard of the Mandela effect? Looney Tunes. Wait, wait hear me out. I... Everybody thinks it's spelled with two O's, as in tune, like a cartoon, when actually it's T-U-N-E. Yes. As in music. Exactly, that, that's, that's a Mandela effect. See, see, at first I thought that this was something to do with, like, parallel universes. Or, or maybe CERN, like the Large Hydron Collider, had ripped something open. Do you think it's the simulation? I'm sure there are exactly what they appear to be. False memories. <laughs> but... But some of them could be breadcrumbs. From what? Mistakes left behind by the countless tiny micro-corrections the sim might have to make to keep it on course. Updates. Tell me, Brendan. What is it you're looking for exactly? Hmm? I'm looking for what's real. For the truth. Let me ask you something. When your child was born, did you feel the smile on your face? The joy inside welling up? The lightness in your step? Hmm? You remember that? And when she died, did you feel the sorrow? Did you feel the pain? Could you feel the tears running down your cheeks? That we get to feel these things should be real enough but it isn't enough. Not if it isn't real. Dr. Fuchs, I've been coding since I was six years old. If this is a simulation, I mean, if this is code, then I can do something. You think your wife thinks you're crazy now? Whatever is running all of this has enormous processing power. But these glitches that we see, like the Mandela effect, show me that it has its limits. If this structure is a simulated structure, the sim need only be concerned with the walls, the shadows, the glass, the reflections in the glass. That's procedural generation. I mean, we use that in video games. It's not wasting any power or any energy on what's inside the building. Not until someone has the intention to walk in there. If a tree falls and there's no one around to see it, does it make a sound? Does it even exist at all? What about the forest itself? You think this world works that way, that when we're not observing it, it's saving data? 
It's my belief that our observation contributes to the creation of the physical world, yes. If a conscious being isn't observing something, does that thing actually exist? In computing, in video games, procedural generation allows a computer to not get bogged down in processing data that it isn't using or observing. If something isn't being observed by the collective consciousness, then it would cease to exist until it is observed once again. But if the computer that was running the simulation had unlimited power, it wouldn't need to conserve bandwidth like that. If we could access the code, it could be crashed. That's my hypothesis. All it would take is a program. Instead of saving processing power, would exploit the processing power. Yes. Like your sim does Using with that procedural good... generation. Yes. Like if the program ran a sim, which was designed to observe everything and all I mean, at the same time. And all the time. Yes, and if those sims spawned new sims, reproducing exponentially, each would eventually overload the original and overwhelm the processor. But you can't run a program like that on an ordinary PC. You need a computer that was strong enough, powerful enough, to run it long enough for it to have an effect on base reality. I headed a team tasked with putting together the university's first quantum computer. It's in there. Cubits. Thousands upon thousands of times faster than any of today's supercomputers. That's impressive. Mm. <laughs> Let me show you around. This is your access point. There's no need to go into the vault. You run your program here, and it's a basic operating system. The hardware is where it's at. Uh... Hi. Toby. Doctor. Manning, thank you. You want to tell me what's going on here? I apologize. It was a spur of the moment thing and I can't explain. Have you been drinking? Oh, listen, man. Dr. Am I even talking to you, man? You go ahead to class. I'll see you there, James. I can't be so certain. Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. If there is a creator, there might be endless reasons why they'd run the simulation. It could be recreational. What makes you think that this is gonna bring your daughter back anyway? We don't. Maybe some future post-human society wants to examine their ancestry. What if it's about power? Corporations coming together, data mongers, Facebook, Google, cell phone companies, building a world with all the information we've left behind. You don't know. That's right. Imagine political models. You put politician X or some real estate tycoon in as president, see what happens over the next hundred years. If you could predict the stock markets, would be ten years ahead of your political enemies, what would that be worth? You put a price tag on that kind of power. 
What if these Mandela effects are breadcrumbs? They're bugs in a system. What happens if no one corrects them? It's no small thing shutting the world down. Bug trigger errors can have ripple effects that can spread through and crash entire systems. You believe that the simulation tried to stop you? My work on this brought me nothing but grief. I was a bug in the system. Brendan, there's something you're gonna need to understand. Ideas are dangerous things. Did you, did you hear that? You gotta calm down, okay? You're starting to scare me. She's gone. is just magically there. There are experiments that show that not a single particle exists with any real properties until it's observed. Even Stephen Hawkins at this point now has a new concept of the universe, what he calls this top-down theory, where he's saying that the actual observer uh, actually uh, determines the past. Now, if you think about it, if, if the particles right now in the present are not determined until you observe them, then how can there actually be a past? All right, are there is a good heart science uh, to support this? So again, I mentioned to you this two-hole experiment. Uh, again, the, the uh, Eisenberg's famous uncertainty principle, the entangled particles. Uh, there's very real hot experiments that are telling us that particles simply do not exist out there with real particles until they're observed. I didn't hear any brushing. I'll brush them again. All right, I'm gonna come. Make sure you get them all. Excuse me. I'm 
sorry. Where were you last night? I called Matt. What time did you get back? Late. What happened? What did you see? I saw. I think I'm going crazy. I saw her. I saw Sam. I saw Sam. Okay, okay. You have to breathe. And now the latest on the inquiry into election irregularities. Election officials say an investigation into how this might have happened is ongoing. Local authorities in Vancouver, British Columbia have issued evacuation. This is the phone of Dr. Roland Fuchs. Please leave a message. Uh, Dr. Fuchs, it's Brendan. Uh... I think something's happening. I, I don't know. I'm not doing too, too good. Uh, please just call me back when you get this. I need a program that utilizes procedural generation. I already have that. I can rip open one of my old game builds, augment it, scale it up. Now, what's nice about quantum computation language is that its syntax resembles the syntax of the C programming language. Its classical data types are similar to the primitive data types in C. One can combine classical code and quantum code into the same program. The program will focus on automating repetition taken from my original game's code, then finding a higher order abstraction using multiplication, it'll exponentially push things along. The only way to know if it works would be to run it through the quantum computer. Brendan? Yeah, babe, I won't be much longer. It just takes time. Do you see her? Yeah. What? What's wrong? Sam? She's okay? What do you mean? Sam. Yeah. We just, we had breakfast and... Oh, you had a bad dream. Hola. Claire. Bren, Bren. Did you eat? Yeah, I'm good. Hey, little lady, what you make over here? A spaceship. Of course. Of course. Jared. Yeah, yeah, man. I know. How, how long has it been? Two years. Yeah, things are great, you know, um, 
she's fine. Yeah, Claire, Claire's, Claire's good. Um, and and Sam's doing great. You remember? <laughs> yeah, it's nice catching up with you too. I will. I'll tell her you said so. And and, and Sam wanted me to say hi. To you. Yeah, yeah. You, you, she's eight now. Eight. She's it's eight. been that long. Can you believe this it? This is the phone of Dr. Roland Fuchs. Please leave a Dr. message. Dr. Fuchs, this is Brendan. Please call me. It, br it brought Sam back. Dad! Dad! It brought my daughter back. Put it on, Dad. gave me the one thing that would make me stop. Sam. My precious Sam. Okay, I'm coming for you. documented in a 30-something-year-old photograph. I went through a long stretch of adolescence. <laughs> what? What? What are you doing? Claire, where are you going? Claire? Claire, where, where are you going? <laughs> Sweetie, come back to bed. I can't, I can't. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Come on, let's go back to bed. Mom, are you okay? She's fine. Sam, go back to bed. Honestly, I, I don't remember it at all. But, I mean, I feel, I feel fine now. Good. It's good, but I can take her, okay? It's fine. You should, you should sleep in. You do whatever you want. Okay? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> yes. I got it. <laughs> it's just... I'm sorry, I... I don't know what happened. It's okay, let's... I'm sorry. Hey, well, well, why don't we just go get Sam? We'll go get Sam. We'll take the day off, right? Get out of the house? Mm -hmm. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
All right, what color should I paint this thing? Orange. Orange. Orange it is. What should we keep in here? Bacon. Bacon? Bacon? Orange doesn't go with anything in the living room. We should paint it brown. The boss already decided we gotta paint it orange. Fucking brown, Brendan. Jesus. Stop it. Oh, Jesus, what are you doing? No, Claire. Wait. Stop. Claire. Please stop. I'm sorry. We'll pay for that. Come on, Sam. We gotta go. Come on, Sam. Wait, Claire. I'm sorry. Come on. Thank you for coming. I know it was such short notice. That's no problem. What happened? She had like an episode. I, let me tell you about it in a minute. I want to check on Sam. Oh, my God, I'll stay close. Thanks. Yeah, you. What's that song you were just playing? Just something I was practicing. I liked it. Is mom going to be okay? <sighs> Uncle Maddie's here. He always makes her laugh. She's gonna be fine. Hey, of all the gin joints in all the world, she walks into mine. <laughs> shouldn't be here. Babe. She Claire. She shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be here! Claire, Claire, you're okay. Claire, okay. Uh, 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 let's, let's get you back to bed, okay? okay. It's okay. Claire, you're fine. Sam, we'll be right back. Thanks, right. I dream of a genie. She's back asleep. Mom's gonna be fine. How long has this been going on, man? What? It hasn't. know what's happening to her. She needs to see somebody, right? Yeah, she needs to see someone. Can you... Can you watch Sam for just a minute, please? I better... Are you going now? Please. Yes, can I help you? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here to see Dr. Fuchs. Oh, are you, are you a student of his? No, ma'am, I, well, actually I was, yeah. Roland, he passed away. 
I mean, I just spoke with him. I just saw, I just saw him. It was quite unexpected. That I can tell you. What happened? I think that the disappointment of what happened with his work, it just slowly consumed him. He became a paranoid hermit. He didn't have the sense to wash himself anymore, he told me. He was separated for some time. I guess what I meant to ask you is, how did he die? He hung himself. About two months ago now. Two months? I'm just trying to get the place in some kind of order before it goes on the market. What the hell is going on? Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean, you, you know, I'm intruding. Uh, it's getting very late. I, I should go. I have to go.
Excuse me. Who are you? I'm just a student. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Are you allowed to be here? Yeah, of course. I'm calling security. No. Yes. Just get, hey, get up! Oh, shit. Shit. I'm on my way home. I don't feel good. Something's uh, wrong. It's all right. It's all right. You, you, I'm on my way there. You'll be all right. I was watching myself. I could see that I was in the kitchen with my eyes closed. Oh, Jesus. What is happening to me and Brendan? You don't have to be afraid, Claire. Just get here fast, OK? I don't know what's going on. It's not good, Brendan. I'm going to you don't have to be afraid.
Other arm. Hey, Sam. Where are you going? We're just going to find shells. I won't go into the water. Okay, just stay where we can see you. Hey, Sam. Leave George with us.